People's Church is a place where we practice the skills we need to build both beloved community within and beyond our walls to make a world that is, has more justice and more love in it. And today our service is focused on the practice of democracy within our church, how we choose our leaders and what our leaders learn from those roles. And this isn't especially, oh, you're here? Yeah. Awesome, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> Thank you, Ollie. Can I talk for a little while and you can go back to your seat for now? No. Nope. Do you wanna tell, share a special word with everybody here? Yes. Yeah. yeah, what is it? Table dogs. In our group, we have table dogs. Be wet. I see what I'm gonna do really. in that. Wow. Okay. Thank you, Ollie. Oh, you can you can sit here for a little bit if you want. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's all sit down and settle. Maybe do a last jumping jack if we need to. Come, let us worship together. I am so glad you're here with whatever energy you're bringing to us today. Okay. One more jumping jack. Okay. Whether you're sitting still or doing jumping jacks, you are welcome. Okay. So welcome to People's Church. All are welcome here as we gather together and move through life uh, challenges and complexities using many sources of wisdom including science, philosophy, the arts, and works from the major world religions. I'm Bob Davis, a member of the Sunday Services Committee, and People's Church is a member congregation of the Unitarian Universalist Association. Here we strive to be a beloved community, embracing and serving our diverse world. Today, as Reverend Rachel mentioned, we're discussing how we govern our community. And I think it's good to yearly reflect on our governing traditions. There, that's all, there are no outside groups or secret insider groups that tell us what to do, what to believe, how to spend our resources. We decide that at our annual meeting every year and in small groups uh, throughout the year. And that means we're dependent on people saying yes when asked to lead a project or even be on the board. And we're dependent on people supporting those leaders uh, in their efforts and observing, in turn, observing how to become leaders themselves because leadership here is kind of like a relay race in that we depend on people taking the torch for a while and then stepping back and passing on the torch to other leaders 
Uh, so we have to have uh, many people ready to step forward and help out. That's how this community was built and how we've successfully evolved over 169 years. People saying, let's make this happen and I will take charge. So uh, now we have Reverend Rachel with some announcements. So a few announcements as we gather. After church today, we have our next edition of our Inquirers series, which is our class that's for newcomers or for anyone who feels like they might have missed a thing or two and want to learn more about the church. And today is the building tour led by Gary Heckman. And if you have not had Gary Heckman show you this church building, you have been missing out, let me tell you. There are some nooks and crannies and secret hiding places. Uh, there's a door onto the roof that if it's not raining and too icy, maybe you can peek out of today. There is a lot to see. So whether you are here for the first time or have been here for decades, if you want to stay, you are welcome. So that is after church in room 19, which is the big room at the top of the stairs. There's lunch and there's childcare. That'll get started around 1230. This Friday night, there is a potluck and game night. We extend a special invitation to people who are newer in our community, but of course, everyone is welcome. So please bring a dish to share and your favorite game. I hope to see you there. Next Sunday, our auction begins. So if you have an item or an event or an experience or a skill to offer, I invite you to either fill out our online form or be in contact with Melissa, our church administrator in the church off office, to have that be listed among the offerings this year. And next Sunday, we will have a guest in this pulpit. Amy GSA Brooks is a UU poet and minister in formation based in Grand Rapids. She was here last year and it was excellent. She's a poet. She brought some of her poetry and some of her preaching to us, and she'll be doing that again. So please come. And now we get to sing. So I invite you into whatever posture helps you sing your best. And Savannah and Jennifer will lead us in song. Good to see y'all. Let's hit it.
Will Hazel and Jasmine come forward and help light the chalice? Each week, we light this chalice, taking time to reflect on its meaning. If you're joining us remotely, please enter in the chat box where you are lighting your chalice. Each week, we also reflect on the, what it means to light the chalice with a reading. Today's reading is by Eric Walker Wickstrom, so that we might together shine. When we light our chalice, everyone focuses on the flame. Yet it is the paraffin of the candle, the cotton of the wick, the potassium chloride and sulfur of the match, and the oxygen in the air around us that makes the flame possible. And the children who light the chalice, of course, too. As leaders, we are not called to be a lone beacon on a hill. Rather, we are meant to work together so that we might together shine. There's a lot of a lot of places that we got our chalices lit today. Okay. Let me see if I can collect all of them. In addition to the chalice lit here at People's Church, today we have chalices lit in Edmonds, Washington, at North Lake, Punto Banco, Costa Rica, Fincastle, Virginia, West Main, the Landing Apartments, oh goodness, Munson Lake near Grand Junction, Arvada, Colorado. Next door to People's Church. All of these exotic locations we love people coming to join us from. And I think that's it. That's all that my tablet will allow me to read at least. Wherever you are, we are so glad you could set aside this time to be with us together. Now I'd like to invite our children forward for a story. I am so glad you are all with us today. You are also allowed to sit on the other steps if you want. It can be a little crowded on this top top ledge, wherever it, wherever you wherever you fit well. I am so glad that all of you are with us today. So today I have a story that's. One of those stories that's a little bit true and a little bit made up. And it's a story that comes to us from Transylvania, which is in Eastern Europe. I know it's not about a vampire though. I know, I wish it was a vampire story. Maybe I'll tell you one of those another time. This is a story about a little village that wanted a church. I know, and so they, realized they were, didn't want to have to keep traveling to the other village so they started to make their own church in their village what do you think you have to do to build a church yeah what ollie what do you think um, they add wood. you have to yep you need the wood so you have the the, the lumberjacks and lumberjanes went out and cut some trees what what about you what do you think you need to do you need the community. Well, we're talking about the building, though. You're getting ahead of me. DeForest, what do you need? What do you think? You need, like, people that actually know how to do it. People who know how to do it. You need a lot of people with specific skills. What, what do you think? 
You need, you need some money. What, what do you think? You need brick. You need brick. So the people got together and they used, the, oh, Georgina, do you have? You need lights. Oh, that's, we'll get to that. This was a long time ago before electricity. Oh, do you have a, something to add to? Electricity right there. I'm, oh, I'm oh, you could just convert a barn house. That's a really, that's a, the easiest idea. I love that idea. That's not what these people did. Oh, Ollie, I'll talk to you again in a minute. I'll have another question. So they started building. They got some wood. They got some bricks. They built some walls. They put in some doors. They found the, they got windows. They did all of this building and they had their church building. And then they decided to paint. So they got all of the brightly colored paint they could find and painted things that they thought were beautiful on the walls inside and out. What would you paint on a church? Oh, what would you paint, Avery? You paint an octopus, Penelope, what would you paint? Rainbows, I love that idea. Georgina? Fairies. Oh, what about Aurora, what about you? Oh, there's two Auroras, this Aurora. Aurora? Um, I think you should make the actions. The actions that you do at a church? The actual, like the you, oh, you'd paint a pic the building. Okay. What about you? What would you paint? Peace signs. Peace signs. I love that. What about you? Sunset colors. Sunset colors. What would you paint? Almost rainbow cross. A rainbow cross. Love that. Okay. Any other ideas? Um, Ollie, what would you paint? Edward. Edward? Okay. <laughs> What would you paint, Herschel? Oh. Dinosaurs? Oh, I love that. And so this village, oh, let me keep telling the story. It's time to be quiet to hear the next part. So in this village, they all painted the things they loved. So there were octopuses and rainbows and rainbow crosses and peace signs and dinosaurs. What would you paint? Oh, thank you. Octopi. Not octopuses. <laughs> I think there's some debate about that, but we'll, we can talk about that at coffee hour. Okay. And so then it got all, they finished all of the painting. Everything was brightly colored. Oh, what would you paint? A cat. A cat. Oh, yes. You can't forget the cat. And so at the end of the, their painting day, it was, it was about dinner time. And so one of the older people in the community said, okay, everybody. Time to go home. Everybody go home and have dinner and then come back. And then we'll have our first service in our village church all together. And so they went home, except for one family who had thought ahead and packed a dinner. And they sat in the church and ate. And a little girl named Zora asked her grown-ups. She said, we forgot something though. There's no lights in this church. Didn't one of you said you need lights? Yeah. yeah, there were there were places to put lanterns, but no actual lanterns. And this person's father said, oh, Zora, you wait, you'll just see what happens. And so as they finished their dinner, they looked out of the church doors and they, it was starting to get dark and they saw all of the families in the village holding a lantern. Do you guys know what a lantern is? It's kind of like a flashlight, yeah. the thing you would hold. Yeah, I have like a computer. Okay, you guys know? Okay, great. Just making sure. And so every family was carrying at least one lantern to light their way to the church. And they saw all of the lights coming and all of the families coming. And then when they got inside the church, everybody had a special place kind of along the side to put their lanterns. And so the, the church was full of light. All of the people brought the light into the church. And that's when Zora said, oh, the people bring the light to the church. That's what's so important about a church building is the people. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see all the beautiful octopi or cats or crosses or everything painted inside. My Parker. Oh, OK. And then after they had prayed and sung and been together for the first time in their new church, oh, they all took their every family took their lantern and carried it out so they carried away some of the light and the goodness and the learning and the truth that they had in that church and took it back to their houses 
and had that light from the church to guide them through the week. And then they came back the next Sunday and left and came back and left and came back and left until Zora was big. And then when she had children, she made sure each of them had a lantern to carry to and from the church to remind them that it is the people that makes the church. And then when they leave, have you ever seen a church with octopus, octopi and cats and rainbows no. painted all over it? You have? Oh, I have not. No, I have not. And then when they would go home, they would carry the light of all that they learned. And so I think about that when we light our chalice, about how when we come together, we have a special light that happens only when we're all together. But then hopefully also we take some things home with us that are special and true. That is the end of our story. Aurora, do you have something you need to say about it? Okay, what is it? So, oh, is this the only day we come? So, on Sundays is when we have our big gathering with lots of people. But during the week, there's lots of smaller times to come together. And I know on next Friday night, there's going to be a special dinner and game night. So, maybe your family could come to that. Okay. Because there is some things, but it's not as exciting as this on all of the other days. Not so much singing, not so many kids, lots of meetings and classes and other good things. Okay, it is time to go to your classes. It is time to sing. I will, I will help you. I invite you, if you're here with us in person or joining us on Zoom, to raise your hand if you've ever been on the board of People's Church. Keep it up. Raise your hand if you've ever been on the nominating committee of People's Church. Raise your hand if you've ever chaired a committee. Keep these hands raised. I want to. I want everybody or most lots of people with their hand. If you've ever chaired any committee at the church. Raise your hand if you've ever been the leader of a team or a project or an event. It's a lot of hands. Thank you. It takes all of us. So this service today is focused on leadership and it isn't just about those who will speak today. So many of us have been leaders, have taken our turn with the baton and it matters. So many of us have been leaders. So many of us will be leaders giving of our time to make this church possible. And while a good follower, a good person who gets this work done is also very important and we honor all of that too. Today is a special day to celebrate the leaders among us. So thank you for being leaders. Your generosity matters. The offering will now be received. So I don't see any people passing the baskets. Okay, they're on it. Okay, great. And now we get to hear from our wonderful choir.
Please join me in giving thanks from the countless gifts we each have been given, gifts of life and love and sustenance. We bring these small portions to share in the works of love, which none of us can accomplish alone. People's Church is a community that supports one another in good times and in hard times. One of the ways we do that is by taking time when we gather to lift up the joys and milestones and sorrows in our lives. If you're with us on Zoom this morning and have something you wish to share, I invite you to type it into our chat box. If you're here in person, I invite you to come forward, speak briefly, share your name and place a stone in our bowl of water. Sources of reason and radiance, sources of courage and compassion, keep watch with those who work or watch or weep this day. May the suffering be soothed, may the weary find rest, may the sick be tended, may the dying and those who love them find peace, May the joyous be shielded. And may we all know we are wrapped in a love that surrounds us always, a web that connects us to all that exists. Prayer for the Lamp Keeper. My prayer for you today is that you understand that you cannot be and say everything. That you are a light, a lamp in the night to help people find their way, but you cannot be their way. Remember also that a steady lamp by which others may guide their own journey is a gift from and to the universe. Be steady, but do not deny your own humanity. Do not forget to take breaks. Do not let your desire to be that steward of that lamp keep you too long from your own journey. Share the burden, share the responsibility, share the honor with others. Feel free to join me in song from your seats. We'll try a little bit of a round on this one. All together.
The first reading today, A History of Church, Including Yours, by Sean Neil Barron. One day, your church was born. Maybe it was a gathering of saints called together for the common worship of a wrathful God, ceaselessly praying between bouts of decrying the evil of Christmas or dancing. Or maybe a few brave souls answered a notice in the newspaper, curiosity piqued by the announcement of a religion where free thinking and tolerance were bedrocks. No matter how it happened, your church was born. A gathering of people, humble, caring, anxious, and quirky, all at the same time, who covenanted to be with one another on the journey of life, death, and everything in between. And so it began, a faithful few, beautifully imperfect, called to that central task, that human task of connecting, loving, and serving. It was just a baby, and yet it was thrust into the human condition, tasked to hold minds and souls bodies and hearts along the roller derby of disease and birth, infighting and joy and Christmas pageants, sometimes all of those at the same time. They gathered to hear the world broken open for insightful sermons, rejuvenating music, and a community whose fierce devotion to each other's well-being rivaled a mama bear's devotion for her cubs. But it wasn't always like that, of course. There were the trying times. And I don't mean just uh, Phyllis and Jack, those stubborn but lovable souls who inhabit the netherworld of committee meetings. No, I mean really trying times. When the church almost split in half over the war or integration. When the mill left town and the town was left vacant. Or when the minister crossed that line and couldn't speak about it for decades. But somehow, you are still here, still on the town common, still the church that everyone recognizes, still the ones that show up every time you're called upon, still using the communion silver until you voted to sell it. New people came, and they changed things, small things, big things, things that Nobody noticed as it happened until suddenly it was hard to even recognize anything anymore. That was a hard moment, a tearful moment. And other things changed too. The proclamations about God once heard loud from the pulpit softened. Wrathful became loving. Distant became intimate. Mandatory became optional. After the war, the nursery and religious education classes were overflowing. Each baby dedicated reminded the church of the incredible beauty of life and the gift this community, all huddled around the baby, would bestow on this child. The history of your church is more a story of the determination of love break forth than it is of tie-dyes or chalices, sermon discussions, or social justice committee meetings. The history of the church is the history of human enterprise, evolving in its sights and sounds, yet revolving always around its core. The history of your church is the gift of potential momentum, of baggage and personality. The history of your church is the launch pad from which you spring into action or disarray. Each day your church is born. As a young adult, 
I spent two years in Belgrade, Serbia, in Eastern Europe. There, I was the only American working with this feminist, anti-militarist collective named Women in Black. And the activists worked to help Serbs face the violence that was done in their name during the wars in the former Yugoslavia in the 1990s. And they worked to challenge the rising religious fundamentalism in the region. So I managed their English language communications and translated publications into English and wrote grants to English speaking funders. And it was powerful work to be able to support. They are some of the bravest people I've ever met. And Belgrade is a place without the liberal Protestant Christianity that is our heritage, if not our practice, as Unitarian Universalists. And as I got to know my coworkers and friends, I mentioned my faith, and they did not know what I was talking about. They were surprised that we welcomed queer folks and women into the highest levels of leadership. But what shocked them the most was our governance. Here, we make our big decisions by congregational vote. The, big, the biggest decisions, budgets and buildings, bylaws, board members, ministers, mission statements are all voted on by members of the church. But religion isn't a democracy, my Serbian friends would tell me, their experience firmly rooted in the Serbian Orthodox Church. But it can be, I would say, in response. Because here, being an inclusive democracy is one of our core religious values and practices. As Unitarian Universalists, we believe that together we are wiser than any of us are alone. There is no higher authority here than the church membership, those who have signed on to the bond of union, acting as a whole. There is no outside pope or patriarch or president who tells us what to do here. There's no one at another congregation or the Unitarian Universalist Association who determines what happens here in this community. Though we collaborate with others in powerful ways in our work for justice, in training religious professionals, publishing hymnals, writing curricula. I don't wanna discount those partnerships, but they are partnerships, not lines of authority. But of course, to do actually do the work of church, the membership delegates authority. We cannot have all 258 members of People's Church picking the story for the service. None of you would want to be on that email thread. That would just be a disaster, right? So you all, by calling me as your minister, gave the power for ministries and programs to me, and I in turn give that power to staff and lay leaders and share it as widely as we can. And you give the power for governance to your nominating committee and your board. They work behind the scenes mostly, monitoring work and writing policy, overseeing budgets. The board wrestles with big questions about the future of the church, making sure our programs and ministries align with our mission to be a beloved community embracing and serving our diverse world. So today, a few of your current elected leaders will share what it means to serve in elected leadership at People's Church. After we sing, we'll hear from Dan Baer from the nominating committee, or Rachel Baer from the nominating committee, Dan Baer from the board, and Gordon Bolar also from the board. So I invite us to sing and then to listen. I invite you to find a comfortable posture in your seat to sing together.
truth Just as long as my heart beats I must answer yes to love Disappointment pierced me through Still I kept on loving you If they ask what I did best Tell them I said yes to love Where Life Sends You by Julian Jamaica Soto. Where is life sending you now? Don't flinch. Where will you go? Across the street to learn the names of your neighbors? Across the city to support interfaith dialogue? To witness the practice of neighbors whose faith has different names, uses different words than yours? Is life calling you to come closer to the grief around you? Not with words, but with empathy and kind silence. Sometimes there is no fixing sadness and we must instead weather it. But together, we make the journey much more possible than alone. Where does life send you? To coffee hour, to start the brew, to a class to accompany young students and experiencing everything that Unitarian Universalism can be for us, both as individuals and as people practicing together in community. Go where your heart pulls you. Catch up to that insistent call, that thing that waits for you, the soft place where your talents can rest and your joy bubble up. The sound, the lights, the homeless shelter, the tasks of governance practiced with care, as much as lighting any chalice are crucial as singing any song. There is somewhere you can be. There, not, there might not be a parking space reserved sign you can see, but there is a yes from the universe where your task is to work or to heal, to rest or to play, it is time to go, to go where life sends you and be who you are meant to be. Hello, I'm Rachel Baer. I'm currently serving my third year on a three-year term on the nominating committee. Of all of the volunteer roles and ways of engaging with church that I've experienced in my 14-ish years of UU churching, this is actually my favorite. It has helped me feel more deeply connected with the church as an institution. Hello, I'm Rachel Baer. I'm currently serving my third year on a three-year term on the nominating committee. Of all of the volunteer roles and ways of engaging with church that I've experienced in my 14-ish years of UU churching, this is actually my favorite. It has helped me feel more deeply connected with the church as an institution and with our church's people. Growing up Catholic, I didn't come to UU church expecting to be involved in the actual governance of the church organization even though the commitment to democratic process was high on my list of reasons for joining. My first year on the committee was the first time I knew such a committee existed and was the first time I really read and understood the bylaws. The process helped me feel more deeply connected to and invested in the church's organizing practices. The other thing I realized in my first year on the committee was how few people in the congregation I really felt like I knew the work gave me a chance to get secondhand acquainted with many folks through my fellow committee members glowing recommendations of them and also gave me reason and motivation to start more conversations. The person who had recruited me to the nominating committee framed it as sort of an incubation group for the board of trustees. 
they said that at the end of the three years, I might then be asked to serve a three year term on the board. But my observation of the process is that it's a totally different job. The work of the nominating committee is to get to know people, to get involved, to meet people, to figure out their skills and their strengths and how they show up, and then to try to assemble a representative combination of complementary people to act in our collective best interests. The meetings for the nominating committee usually take place between late January and mid-March, but the work is ongoing year-round. And it's such joyful work. And I think people are just incredible. And I mean, you people, you are amazing. And I love thinking about whose perspective is what we need right now, whose vision or thoughtful deliberation or necessary critiques will help our church progress. And especially who has that vision or gift and is waiting to be asked to share it. Because so much of what happens in this world happens because of the people who have the time and the resources and often the audacity to show up with a loud voice and a big presence and quick answers. Our nominating process is a way to ensure that we're making space for the wisdom of the non volunteers and the deliberators and the quiet ones. It's also a way to make sure the load isn't always falling on the people who are fastest to say yes. It's a way that we practice our way into our values, and I find it an important and very satisfying volunteer role. The, the nominating committee's work is underway right now, and you can all help the process go smoothly this year in a couple of ways. First, you are free to suggest potential nominees to us, yourself or someone else, understanding though that they'll go on the list and the committee will still do our work and extend invitations as always. And if you're one of the folks who receives one of those invitations, you can answer quickly because a speedy no is just as helpful as a yes. So begin to consider your answer now. But however you choose to serve the church, thank you for making this a place that I love to be. Hi everyone, my name is Dan Baer and I've been a member of People's Church for eight years now. I'm currently in the middle of year four of serving on the board. Board terms are three years and People's Board had an unexpected opening following the tragic death of Matt Johnson last year. I was asked to serve one extra year and didn't think twice about extending my service with our church in this way. I was asked to share about my experience with the board, as well as what I've learned during my years on the board. As I've mentioned in service a few months ago in a previous church skit I participated in, I don't always like meetings. Have you ever been in a meeting and thought, this could have been an email? Jokes aside, there have been countless times I didn't feel like going to a meeting and would have preferred to stay home. And I must say, even after meetings where hard conversations are had, I more often than not leave people's church board meetings with my cup full, feeling energized and glad to have been involved. Before I joined the board, I was a member of people's for four years, and I wondered if I was qualified to do this. I've learned that you don't have to have a deep knowledge of church policy and governance to play a meaningful role on the board. I've learned a lot about the workings of people's church from serving on the board. I also really like the people I've gotten to know in this role. Serving on the board will likely give you a deeper understanding of the inner workings, the church's role in the broader community, and you will likely continue, continually learn throughout your board service. The third thing I've learned is less concrete. I've never experienced such a deep feeling of grace from and common purpose with a group of people. There's space to learn. There are countless opportunities to lead. If you have space in your life to give a lot, then you can give a lot. If things change for you, as they did for me after my mom died two years ago, and you have less to give, others will share the load. The board is a group of nine people and that's because we believe 
that the work of governance is to be shared. My name is Gordon Bolar. I am a board member. I'm also chair of the preparedness committee and uh, on the Sunday service committee. And uh, before you think, well, gee, he just steps forward and volunteers for everything. I was a little reluctant when I first came to People's Church and I got kind of started swimming in these waters with volunteering just to help take down the holiday bazaar. And there was lots of help and lots of support and people knew what they were doing and i thought you know where else in my life have i seen this kind of culture i saw it in the boy scouts um, we've got an eagle scout here who took a leadership role and created the the work a labyrinth right and so i've also had experience in a lot of nonprofits where volunteers were very important and volunteer leadership was extremely important public tv public radio at the kia so i felt at home i i felt like i'd lucked out and come to a place where the culture of leadership was just in the air that we breathe around here so i don't already have to say it because Reverend Rachel has done it with the hand show, but look to your left, look to your right, and look at yourself. You know, you probably already are either volunteering or leading somehow. This is our culture. This is what we do. I'm not up here so much to lecture anyone. I'm up here to congratulate you for the kind of culture that we have created here at People's Church. So when you get to the place where you kind of think maybe I ought to sort of, you're hearing the call, you're hearing the voice. Say yes, step forward. Um, so I said yes, I got on the board and two years ago, this is my second term, um, not knowing everything that would be required, but I'd done a little investigation and you know, I saw uh, preparedness and safety as a need, so I stepped forward with that. And uh, the good news is we will be implementing our new emergency action plan in early March. We're going to be doing some training, well, next Sunday for the safety and medical team members. And we have 15 of those. I was amazed that people stepped forward when asked. Almost everyone I ask stepped forward and said, yes, I want to be a part of this. Yes, but that's the culture that we've created. So I just ask you to help sustain that culture, help it move forward. We've got something really good going here. So when you're asked, and if it's the board, I hope you'll respond with a yes. Come on in. The water's fine. Thanks to all of our speakers today. And um, for our closing song, I invite you to rise and body your spirit to sing it together. <laughs>
do we have any nominating committee members in in the room today? So there's Lori back there. There's Lois over here. Just wanted to point them out, just in case you might be hearing some stirrings um, today about about stepping into leadership. And talking to them is not a it's not a binding commitment at this stage, of course. Um, but just if you wanted to learn more. Or if you're on Zoom, or if you're seeing this later on YouTube, um, you know, contact me, and I can I can get you connected to the people who can tell you more, uh, because that is sometimes how the call comes. So a blessing for all of us as we end today, written by John Burens. Blessed are those who yearn for deepening more than escape, who are not afraid to grow in spirit. Blessed are those who take seriously the bonds of community, who regularly join in celebration and learning, who come as much to minister as to be ministered unto. Blessed are those who bring their children, who invite their friends to come along, to join in fellowship, service, learning, and growth. Blessed are those who support the church and its work by their regular, sustained, and generous giving, and who give of themselves no less than their money. Blessed are those who know that the church is often imperfect, yet rather than harbor feelings of anger or disappointment, bring their concerns and needs to the attention of the church leaders. Blessed are those who, when asked to serve, do it gladly, who realize that change is brought about through human meeting, who do the work of committees and stay till the end. Blessed are those who speak their minds in meetings, who can take and give criticism, who keep alive their sense of humor. Blessed are those who know the work of the church is the transformation of society, who have a vision of beloved community transcending the present, and who do not shrink from controversy, sacrifice, or change. Blessed are they, blessed are you, indeed. Let us go in peace and go in love. <laughs>